Welcome to Become Famous Podcast, the ultimate destination for achieving fame in your industry. Join us for discussions as we uncover the strategies and secrets to becoming known, navigating cancel culture, and staying authentic. Stay tuned because here at Become Famous, the journey to fame begins now. Welcome to Become Famous Podcast. I'm your host, Torin, four years in and the fourth season. Isn't it amazing how times have changed? I want to say thank you to my veteran listeners. Thank you for supporting me from the beginning, the humble beginnings in Kinab when I was stuck there because of COVID. And I say stuck, but happily stuck. It changed my life. It was the most amazing time and the hardest times. Kind of like what Charles Dickens says, it's the best of times and it's the worst of times. But it was a really wonderful time to see people come together. And in that time when I'm in the hotel room all by myself, I start the podcast thanks to Michelle Sorrow. Thank you so much, getting me to have the courage to to do this. And I started out with going back to what I felt was the most important things was bringing life to acronyms. And acronyms have been very much part of my life with the carbon capture and storage, which we have episodes about, uh, and get bringing life to that acronym. And then quickly when I'm in Kanab and I see these amazing families and these amazing businesses coming together and selflessly helping each other, like Sago Restaurant and all the restaurants in Kanab supporting one another by not, by making sure every single day one restaurant is shined the light on. That's the restaurant we're going to support today. No, now we're going to go to the next restaurant and the other ones would close and would support one another to make sure that no one went bankrupt and to really help in that difficult time. And it quickly made me realize that moving beyond your acronyms didn't really make sense. And so then we shifted it over to moving beyond your tribe, like leaving the tribe of, of tribal thinking, of, of trying to be like everyone else and to shine the light. But really, what is that? Become famous. And how did become famous come about? Well, I um, saw this quote. And the quote, and at the same time, I was going to these brand experts or helping me find out what it is that I should be doing because I wanted to start my own business. And how do I brand myself? Kind of like what all of us need to think about. How is How does our personal brand look like, feel like, and how are we communicating ourselves online? And it's so easy to get confused because we've got so many different interests. I know I have many interests and one, that's one of my challenges. And I'm having people now help me out with my branding um, to make sure it stays on brand and, and so forth. So, and they were, and so it was interesting when we're going through that brand process, fame comes into the sphere and I'm like, fame, what is that all about? And I was like, uh, I don't like fame. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, I'm a communications person and I've helped people communicate, brush up, make them look wonderful out there. But fame, Fame is for Hollywood, for faded stars, for people that don't know how to handle it. And, and I keep think going back to the film from Sunset Boulevard where uh, Norma Desmond goes down dramatically down those steps. And then she goes, I'm ready for my close up. And the lights are shining like they're shining on me right now. Lights are shining and even more so. And then all these cameras and, and what she didn't realize when she's going down those stairs is she's facing jail because she killed the guy that told her. You're faded. You're past. You're not what you used to be. And she couldn't handle the truth. And that's kind of how I thought of fame, fame in a very destructive way. And then at the same time, I have these brand people telling me, you, um, you help people become famous. And I'm like, famous? No. And then, and then I see this quote that really changed the direction of where I go and changed basically everything really. And I wrote, this book, Become Famous, Fame Revolution. And what was the quote? Well, the quote comes from Socrates and it is, fame is the perfume of heroic deeds. Isn't that beautiful? Fame is the perfume of heroic deeds. It brought a different aspect of fame for me. There's beauty in fame. And I think that's why we have this love-hate relationship with fame. We want to become known or we want people to see us really see us. And I think that's really where fame comes in, where people crave it to maybe the extreme level that we see that what, why we don't like fame is that we want people to see us. We want to feel like that what we have and in have inside of us and what we give really matters. And so then I just started investigating. I went down the rabbit hole of fame. So I went into fame, like showing how we are all famous in many aspects. Like that's 
the first level of fame. I talk about my levels of fame in here. Like the first level of fame is physical fame. You, uh, we birth children. Why do we birth children? We want to create a legacy. And then we try to become known and be seen in our community, which is social fame. And then we long for in us, this innate desire in us for people to see what we have as a gift beyond having kids, beyond our social. There's something inside of us that we really, really want to bring up. That's my experience when I talk to people. And that is the public figure fame, or I call the luxury fame, right? You become the public figure. You become something that can shine the light of a gift that's uniquely yours. Now you can have that gift in all the other aspects, but when you have the courage to let it really shine, that's when you go into public figure and you become luxury fame, and then you have timeless fame. Uh, that's what I talk about in my book. But uh, what I've learned is that we all want to create that legacy, that timelessness of what we have, that we matter and what we bring to the world matters. That's really what this is all about. Become famous for what you do. What you do. We're not like Kim Kardashian. And I don't mean to bash Kim Kardashian. She, she has other products, but the way we think of her, it's her beauty. It's how she looks. It's not about how you look. It's about what do you bring to the world? What are you giving to the world? And what gifts do you bring to the world? And what I learned from going into this rabbit hole of fame, and then if you recall, we're in COVID, right? And what happened with COVID? We got so used to cameras. Yeah, we did. Uh, Zoom. I mean, I am so grateful for Zoom. It kept me connected with my family. It kept me to have clients over in Europe. And we got so used to it. I forgot how to be social. So then I had to suddenly go out and be social, right? Like we, so interesting how life just completely changed us and it completely changed me, but it changes that we got used to videos, vlogging. And I remember 15 years ago, I was talking to this um, expert in Congress. He was a leader on setting up, um, his name is Tim Petty. He was setting up the whole infrastructure of behind the scenes of the Senate. And he kept talking about vlogging. And I didn't get vlogging. This was in 2003. Vlogging? And now we all know what it is. It got ignited by COVID. It got ignited that we wanted to share. Like now when I'm on Zoom and you don't have your camera on, I'm like, dude, you got to put your camera on. I want to see you. I want to see you. We want to see each other. And that's really what happened with us, we got used to camera, camera lights in action. And I had a client of mine that goes, I don't want to be a movie star. I want to go back to the way I used to be when I was a CEO, when I could hide behind my desk and I had all these communications people go out there and create these prescription press releases, the talking points. This is how we massage it to the public. But you can't do that anymore because everything is instant. When everything is instant, you can't prepare. Like I remember when I worked in the Senate and I was a press secretary, I could write I had three hours. I had three hours that East Coast didn't have because we could have the time to massage, to write the press releases, and then bring it out to the West Coast while we were on the East Coast. And you had this time lapse that you could prepare and prepare how you're speaking. But now things are all live and instantaneously. And the more you're live and instantaneously, the better you are. Is that interesting? So what is this podcast about? It's really about those changes. I mean, we've, we've gone through a lot of changes and I'm a Gen Xer. And when I was writing the book, again, the book there, I listed on there all the things that a cell phone replaced and I uh, came to like 30 something, right? 30 something things that replaced in our lives. No wonder why we had such bigger houses, bigger things. Our house is more messy you know, you can have your all your books in the phone. You can have all your documents. Everything is on the phone, right? Um, and so you can operate on the phone. And that's what the world is doing right now. And so when I was investigating fame, because, wow, fame actually has some good parts to it. And then I see, wow, there's all these levels of fame. And how did I find that? Well, I actually go back to reading the original Plato's Symposium. Because if Socrates said fame, my company is named uh, Diotima Strategies, and it's named after the woman that was the advisor to Socrates. So I've always had this fascination with that era, right? And I'm asking myself, okay, let me go back to the original source, because I never really did. You know, you just write the analysis, what the experts are telling you, but what are we learning today? 
Let's go beyond the experts. Let's get to the source ourselves. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons we've learned from COVID, at least from my friends and colleagues, is the sense of let's go to the source ourselves. Let's not rely on the gatekeepers. So I went and read Plato's Symposium. And what is so fascinating is Diotima, which is what I named after, was because she was the advisor to Socrates. That's all I knew. But then when I read Plato's Symposium, He actually gives her the stage to talk about the ladder of love, how love has a ladder to arrows, to friendship and all this stuff. And he gives her credit. He gives a woman credit. And fast forward in in the world, they try to stop and then she says she's fictitious. And in my book, I say she's not. And there's a lot of experts that will support that argument. But what was so fascinating was, is that in that source, what I found was that there is an innate desire to be immortal, which I call fame. And where Socrates is saying perfume of heroic deeds is fame, right? So fame, we want to be seen, to be known for what we do. And it's not about how we look, but what is the gift that we contribute? And I believe there's one gift. There's many gifts around, but there's just one thing that we do well. And I know I've been all over the world, all over, done all this stuff. And the essence of what I do, the passion I have is to bring your gifts to the world. I, I just can't help it. When I talk to someone, I boom, I come up with all these ideas and, and uh, dialogue with people. Oh, this is what you could do. We need you. We need people to become impactful for what they do. And that's really what this podcast is about. But more importantly, what it's also about is we're in an age that's never happened before. And I I was a nerd when it came to this book. Nerd. I spent almost two and a half years, three years investigating it. When I heard about Socrates and fame, I go in. When the branding people say to me that fame is kind of like in your in your branding. I didn't like it at first, but then, you know, when Socrates says fame is okay, I'm like, okay, let me look into this. And it's so amazing is that fame is such a beautiful word. Yes, it can have the negatives. And I, in my reviews of the book, people are saying I'm so positive. I do talk about how we as Gen Xers didn't have the power that people have today. And for us who are Gen Xers, it's very hard, I believe, to make that transition. I've been used to behind the scenes. It was hard for me to to actually promote this book. And you know, it's so interesting. I couldn't even promote it for, for the longest time because we're just not used to it, right? We're not used to becoming known. We're not used to this new era. And it's never happened before. I went through history. I have been practically written out of this book. I have like four other books in line. And one of them is The History of Fame. And when I was looking at it, there's never been a time like this where you can become known for what you do as a regular person. And why is that? It's because you have a cell phone. A cell phone is a media company. You can go viral at a moment's notice if the issue ignites someone else's heart. That's simple. You can become known. And isn't that exciting? I think it's exciting. And um, But it's hard to. Because what's happening right now, because 86% of the world has a smartphone, you can have your issues become known. There's an expectation that you need to become known. And what do I mean by that? You can't hide. You can't just be a mom and pop organization without an Instagram, a, a big brick and mortar, right? The ones that are out on the streets. No, we're expecting a lot. We're ordering so much more online. Now, it's not as much as we think it is. It's like 40% here in the US, but at the same time, that's where we're going. And you're not just the offline person. You're also the person online. And how do you deal with this? And so for me, and the start of the whole book is number one, fame with Socrates. But number two, I kind of know the fame industry in a sense. I never thought of it as a fame industry, but working with politicians, they have to become known. Lights, camera, action, media, television, right? And then I had a short stint with working with uh, music, then doing a little bit with authors. And it's all a very particular way of working. And that's really what this Become Famous is about, is, is showing you what it's like. And it's interesting, we in Washington, D.C., because that's predominantly where I worked, we called ourselves Hollywood for the uglies. <laughs> Wood for uglies, like what? 
Yes, because the same way that we were managing our public figures, our politicians, is the same way you manage Hollywood, the, the movie stars, right? And when we would come together, we had the same language. And when I left Washington, D.C. to go into corporate world, they didn't have that. And there's such a great lesson and strategies to learn. And I think we all need to learn from that because we are all now public figures. We all need to think of ourselves in that way. And it's a mind shift. It's a complete, complete mind shift. Because before, like my cli my client who said she doesn't want to become a movie star, she's absolutely right. She could hide. She didn't have to bring anything. It was the features and benefits of the product or it's the personality of the product. She could be behind. Now, companies are expected to have a personal opinion, personal opinion, right? They're kind of being people having an opinion on politics. What are they going to do? What's their corporate social responsibility? We have all these kinds of things that are thrust upon us that we have to do now, that we didn't have to do, but a politician always had to think of. So when a political candidate's going out there, he has to think about, and a movie star, it's not just the product that they're bringing out, the movie or the election. We wanna know more about them. We wanna know about the people, the people behind it. So we scrounge around to read, 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 learn, watch. Like for instance, yesterday I was looking at the, um, the Met Gala, the beautiful gowns. And then when you see someone, you want to learn a little bit more. Are they married? Are they divorced? <laughs> what all, I don't know, curious minds wants to know, right? And that's really where we are now. All of us have to think that way. And there's some good parts and there's some bad parts about it, right? The good part is, yes, I can become known. I have all this power, but yet, and you're an arbiter. So you can like something or you cannot like something, right? Thumbs up, thumbs down, right? And what's interesting is the thumbs down can come to you. Yeah, to what you say. You can be completely canceled. And how do you handle that? What are the emotions you have to go through? And I remember having to work with um, political leaders, CEOs, when you get that bad news from the media, they didn't interpret it the way you wanted it to be. Wait, they didn't write the exact thing that was in the press release. And you're like, uh, no, they're not going to do that because they're interpreting you in a certain way. And that gap can be so heart-wrenching. It can be so heart-wrenching when you read it. And how do you support someone? Well, in the book, we have, we have like some tidbits on it. But, and that's what we're going to talk about too. Not only that, when you have to be on like a politician, be on like a musician, be on like an actress, what do you, how do you stay real? How do you stay authentic in all of this? And I think that's sometimes the hardest thing. You know, I'm, I'm doing TikTok, right? And I'm, one channel is doing all right. I had one time 30,000 likes. It was like, oh my gosh. And then some, I'm getting zero to one. And you don't feel like being authentic every day. And what does authentic mean? Does it mean that I have to look perfect, look great? How do I stay in that mode? And that's what we're going to talk about. And it's really about the industrialization of authenticity. Authenticity has become a commodity and a product. And what's interesting when they talk about it in the quantum physics and quantum specialist gurus like Joe Dispenza and, a, and a like those guys is there's a frequency. The higher the frequency, the more people like it. And so the highest frequency we have is our authenticity. And what does that mean? How do you stay authentic and not practice? So I kind of like when I'm doing this podcast, I was like practicing over and over again, the intro and outro, intro and outro. How do I stay authentic, but yet not screw it up? <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about too, because it's a mind shift. It's a complete mind shift in what we're going through right now. And that is why it took me a while to have the courage to create that title, Fame Revolution. But I couldn't see it any other way. First, it was a new fame economy. It was fameology. Gosh, I had one time the title be leaving the tribe, crossing the chasm up the mountaintop. And I was trying to figure out how to put all of that into word. But really, the word is fame revolution. It's the revolution of leaving your tribe, facing all of those gaps that's within you that makes you not want to go out there and become known. 
And then when you become known, it's just expanding on what you are. But it's all, it's so intricate. It's so many issues that we're going to talk about because it is a revolution. Your life is upended. Everyone's life is upended because 86% of the people of the world has a phone. 86% of the world has, knows how to use video or not know how, but can. 86% can become viral and they could upend your business. And how do you capitalize on it? But you know what's so exciting? No one, no one can compete with you. As I say, the greatest differentiator is you. And 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 when it's a differentiator, and this is really the difficult thing for everyone to understand, is in the fame revolution, where there's fame democracy, where everyone can become famous, you're competing with the world and becoming famous, you have to embrace that you are a public figure. And what does it mean to be a public figure? When we were working like in Washington, D.C., or when I was talking to my colleagues or someone that I felt familiar with, the Hollywood, and we were the Hollywood for the uglies, is that when you're a public figure, you're also a product. Product and person. You are both. And a company needs to be both, and a person needs to be both. And that is the hardest thing to understand what does it mean to be a product? And, and we, you, because you're being sold, people are buying products because of you. And at the same time, you are a person. And it's the yin and the yang of the public figure. And you need both. A company needs to be a public figure. A person needs to be a public figure. And why? And it's so interesting because Donna Miller talks about that with the brain. The brain can only conserve certain calories. If it gets to be too complicated, too big of an issue, you start falling asleep. Have you ever fall asleep in the pew when you were at church? So you are a public figure. So it's the product and the person. And how do you deal with that? That is a difference that we help our clients help them understand what it means. And sometimes we get offended when people say, all they want is for my money. Yeah, but you are part of making money, right? And so that is something we're going to talk about too. How do you deal with being the face of the company or the face of yourself, selling yourself? And you know, people are thinking, oh, this is just for entrepreneurs. This is for business owners. No. What I like so much, what I quote in the in the book is Carla Harris. Carla Harris is a best-selling author and she uh, is a fantastic speaker. If you ever get to hear her, she's quite amazing. I heard her at the Oslo Business Forum and when she talks about people that are in, in the corporate world need to become known. They need to shine their gifts. And she talks about herself, about being a gospel singer, hiding that part of her. But it was when she integrated that with all of who she was that she really rose to the highest level at Morgan Stanley. And so... This is not just for business owners. This is not just for entrepreneurs, but it's also for you who are in the corporate world. And that's what we're going to cover. But with Become Famous, Fame Democracy, what's really important too is that it's not just me. It's not just my perspective. And so what we're bringing on is we're bringing on other people to bring a color to the fame and different ages. I'm a Gen Xer. We're bringing Gen Z, which is Sage Toomey, who is a TikTok influencer. And then we're going to bring on uh, my business partner, which is Zachary. And he is a millennial. And so they're going to come from different perspectives. And then we're going to have Lisa Duncan, which is really fascinating. I really believe that there's new professions coming out of this. And she'll be talking about her profession, which she calls the voice writer. And then With all of this, we're still going to go back to the roots of the, of the podcast, do stories from, like I've done stories from Kanab, I've done stories from, from Sioux Falls, and we're going to have those stories. So Zachary will be talking about his little town, Milford, which reminds me of this small little town in the UK, absolutely beautiful, quaint, and talk about that as well as businesses. Sage will talk about her expertise on Taylor Swift. We love Taylor. And so she'll be talking about how Taylor, is the public figure. And we actually talk about her in our book, how Taylor Swift is the role model of, of the various components. Not that we want to be Taylor Swift, but she's, we got some really good lessons to learn from her. And then, um, then it's really about the, 
the journey of becoming famous. What is the journey? The personal branding, how are you looking? What are your message? How do you deal with cancel culture? How do you deal with being authentic, not authentic? All of that is souped up into this podcast. So going all the way right around, giving a little bit of a background stories and a little bit here and there, it is about how to, to help you become known in your industry. And that's really what we're focusing on. Uh, we're focusing on, and it could be your community too, but we're really focusing mostly on businesses, B2B industries where you really want to capitalize. So it's kind of like what people used to call it thought leadership. And we are what we say to people most times, we are a thought leadership agency. We help you bring your thoughts to life. We help to bring some of you out there. And what we're seeing is that is what really become famous is, is how to become known for what you do. And there's so many interesting ways to talk about it. So we're going to, we're going to deal with all of it. And I think it's going to be more fun having all these different um, hosts. And also if you want to be a host, yes, if you want to be a host, I would love, we're going to have a slot uh, a couple of times per month where we will bring in a host guest. So if you would like to host, don't know how to do a podcast, but you'd like to, and you have you have a guest that you really want to profile, send me a DM. We would love for you to do that. I, I want this to be a way for us to really explore all aspects of fame. And what's so interesting in the book uh, and what I learned was that there's so little studies on this because we've never had it in this world that anyone can become famous. There are gatekeepers, sure. And the gatekeepers is the public opinion more than anything right now. It's not the media as much as it used to be, but it is us we are the arbiters yes 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 no 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 ah oh, we kind of like it kind of not right that is where the world is now and what does that all mean so we're going to have experts we're going to have authors and um love authors because authors really what i love from one of my mentors ray edwards um fantastic podcast if you want to learn about copywriting um he basically shows that a thought is not complete until it's on paper and when he said it at first, I was like this, I don't know about that. I've been in communications. I know it, but it wasn't until I took the years to write this book, which was quite a feat. And I have to give a shout out to my editors, Zachary, Lisa, and Lisa was also a voice writer is, is getting it onto paper. I've got so much more of a solidified understanding. And not only that, it has a legacy of its own, right? Now other people can take it, interpret it, and use it the way they need to use it. And that's when the, you bring life to your idea. And that's how you bring life to you when you go out there. So thank you so much for listening. I'm so excited for the journey. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see, particular in the fame journey that you want us to focus on, we'll create series and maybe create series from different age groups, different vantage points, because really the world has changed. We are in a revolution and to understand all the components of where this revolution is going, we don't know. But what this podcast is going to try to do is take a little bite out of it and Try to understand some components of what this means for you, your business, your industry, how to rise and how to do it authentically that fits you. I think that's really what's so difficult for us Gen Zers. It's used to being behind the scenes and I could be wrong. There's some people that don't agree with me with that, but I really believe that uh, for me, it was very hard to go out and do this, but you get a team to support you and you need a team. So Thank you. And uh, I look forward to next time. Thank you for listening to Become Famous Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review our show. Your support helps us keep bringing you valuable insights on achieving fame in your industry. Keep shining and see you next time.